And uh, Solar, on the other hand, the king of defense, will, of course, be trying to just hang on and stabilize. The first map is going to be Alcyon. It's a map with a gold base. I doubt we'll see that in the early stages. Down here in the bottom left side of our map, representing Cloud9 in the red, it is Gumiho. And his opponent all the way in the opposite corner, apparently going for a 15 hatch. He is Solar. Yeah, no cheeky gold base first. That was a strategy we saw quite a bit on this map, right? Where yeah. players were really rushing out that wall and they were trying their very best to get to those golden minerals as quickly as possible. It's been kind of fun to see this map develop because for a little bit there, the Terrans were actually scouting super early just to check whether or not the Zerk actually took the gold base first. Instead, we're going to just go for a good old command center first. We've seen this in a lot of games, Big. Very economic start and uh, I think quite good against what Sol is doing. Solar's build is very safe against aggression. And we know that Gumiho does mix in proxy two and three racks marine pushes. He does that quite a lot in this matchup in their head to head. So Solar is saying, look, if I get my spawning pool 10, 12 seconds early, I've got queens and things out faster, I'll be safe. However, gives up a little bit of mineral mining. Yep. Uh, of course, gets his queens out faster means earlier injects, but creep spread also. And Gumiho, of course, with the CC first, we're just kind of keeping our eyes on the follow up. And it is indeed a second gas. So quick factory. Um, I feel like for Gumio, it's awkward playing against him because you're often dealing with like three Hellions and a Reaper. You got a Medivac with eight Marines over there. Then there's a Liberator coming in the other side and he's just kind of poking and prodding at all sides and everything hits at a slightly different timing. Like Gumio is the guy who will attack you with two Hellbats and 10 Marines at the four and a half minute mark. And you're like, is this an attack? Like, yep. really? This? This is such a weird unit set. But then there's something in your main base at the same time. As Zergs derive when they know their opponent's builds and they know exactly when to build army to be safe against Gumiho, it's always kind of figuring things out as you go. No, you're absolutely right. Generally speaking, you can make such a wide variety of strategies, right? So there's yeah. the build orders that we consider to be optimal. Like, say, for example, the 16 Marine drop. You hit with 60 Marines, two Metavex and Stimpak, right around the five minutes and 10-ish second mark, right? That's one of those builds that Zerg players have played countless times against. However, Gumiho goes for those timings and those unit compositions that are a little bit funky. And when exactly do you decide to start making Zerglings, right? When do you start making defensive units here if you're solar? Maybe it's a good idea for him to go for Roaches in this match, right? They've been pretty popular as of late. Mech also not uncommon in 2024 so far. We see it quite frequently, even though Gumiho hasn't been that big of a fan of that style in general. Which in my mind, by the way, is kind of funny because he played Mech when nobody played Mech, right? And then Mech became a lot more mainstream. It's like, nah. <laughs> He's like a bit of a Mech hipster. Yeah, you know, you mentioned you eat Battle Cruises and how he used to love them. He, he won a GSL with Battle Cruisers in like 20, 2019, 2017. But it was before the Battle Cruisers became good. <laughs> yeah, before like, they got buffed. They couldn't move <laughs> and shoot. They were the most awkward unit. They'd teleport in and they'd just sit there. And if you'd run away, they'd be like, oh, I can't move and shoot at the same time. It's slow as well. You know, <laughs> it was super slow, super awkward, but cool finals that he won over, of course. Um, I think it was Sue in the finals there. It was a very fun one. Good chance it was Sue. Yeah. Good. Second place at the GSL Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Not a surprising result. <laughs> Sue, of course, famous for his second place. He ended up turning that story around and having a very emotional win here in Katowice in 2019. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately not here this year. Nice spore trick there to save the worker from Solar. It is a two barracks play. Did Solar see that? No. No. He's been scouting this angle for a little while, but he doesn't know exactly what he's playing against. And one strategy that we've seen a lot from Terrans, especially on this map in this tournament so far, is a near identical looking opener, at the very least from Solar's point of view, but then with a very quick third command center instead. That is not what Gumiho is going for at all. This is a two base push. He will certainly be making a third command center. I expect it within the next half minute or so. But this is one of those attacks. You brought it up already. This is a bit of a funky one. We have a combination of units. Stimpak is not done yet, but the Medivac is moving out with what, seven Marines? Seven Marines. Stim's going to be ready soon. He's got a few Hellions out as well. And the third command center goes down. And this is it. It's a kind of in-between build. That's what he's famous for. The Overlord finally scouting the second barracks in the main, seeing that Stim. Marines will clean it up. Spore Crawlers are building not the most necessary thing against this sort of multi-drop play. And for Gumio, it's about keeping Solar off balance. If you lose a drop, you lose some of these units, Solar's going to explode on the work account and you're going to be way behind. So Gumiho, it's about unit preservation and trying to catch his opponent off guard. Nice queen intercept, but Gumiho's watching. Absolutely. 
He did hit a bit of a supply block though during all of that, so Solar actually forced to make four Overlords at the same time. Maybe Gumiho getting under his skin just a little bit. Now the Stimpak upgrade is done. The thing about these pushes though is that yes, they can catch you off guard, but generally they're also not quite as powerful as the most optimal version of these builds. So Solar doesn't really need to make that many Zerklings. He could probably get away with a pretty quick fourth hatchery right now on the back of this. Question is, where is he going to be building it, right? Will it be to the left of the natural or is it going to be over here at the three o'clock position? Yeah, both viable options. Uh, if you expand more to the right side, you are more centralized in your defense, trying to focus on dominating that right side of the map. But it does mean if a push gets up there, of course, it's going to really strike gold as it does take you down. Three more barracks on the way. The double upgrade started. Uh, so basically, Gumiro's done a great job of, of just economically transitioning. He hasn't committed too much to the attack. He's going into the economy and the upgrades with only a very slight delay on them. And he's kept, of course, Solar off balance. But has he kept Solar off balance enough? Solar's double Evo chambers are coming in. His fourth base is Bainling Speed. Solar will be about a minute behind in the upgrades, which is not the wildest thing, but only a five worker advantage for Solar. I still feel like Gumiro is keeping this in a very even situation. And if there's one big battle where someone really crushes, it's suddenly a big advantage. Right now it's neck and neck. You're absolutely right. Solar though does have that bailing speed coming up, right? That's maybe a half minute or so away at this point, which is a very important upgrade in this matchup. A big Zerkling counterattack as well, catches a bunch of Marines, may be able to grab a few of those SCVs over at the third base too. In the meantime though, over at the third base, there is a big push happening. He's waiting to engage right now until bailing speed is done. Ton of Queen energy available though, so they're transfusing each other back up to full HP. You gotta be so careful here as the Zerk. Poor Krilla does get focused down. The Queens are almost completely out of juice. Their healing is gone. Failing speed, though, is getting close. About 20 seconds away, not even 10 seconds. That is going to be here very soon. 1-1's one not quite done for Gumiho. I think he's overstimmed. He just did another stim there. Yep. He's going to have to... I, I would actually love to see him pick up the tank and leave. I, I know it's I a think he needs decision, to go. but he's definitely going to get pushed back. You don't want to lose too many units here. Well, he is going to lose quite a few more. Bailings are done right now with their speedy upgrade. And they're going to be rolling on forward. We're going to try and boost into the main base. Ah, this looks like a bit of a desperation boost, right? Like, I don't love it. That Medivac in the front, low HP, gets sniped by the Queen immediately, repositioning on the Spore Crawler as well. You love to see it. Super active play here by Solar. You brought it up. This is the style that Solar loves to play. Oh, my God. Okay, that could have been an absolute disaster for Gumiho, but... This is a really strong start here for Solar. This is where he gets comfortable. This is where he, well, gets to do whatever he likes, right? Be it lurkers, be it... There's so many options right now, but the scariest part, at least in my mind, of this game is already passed here for Solar. I absolutely agree, Loco. You know, Solar doesn't get the most exciting nicknames. He's being called the unluckiest Zerg in the world. Uh, amongst other things, uh, I feel like the Sponge is a fitting nickname for his Zerg vs. Terran recently because yeah. he, he just absorbs oh, right. everything. Everything you throw at him, he absorbs and he always comes out ahead. He has such an amazing defense and macro stat on those player stats they've given him because he's a guy who looks like he's getting battered repeatedly. I, I regularly cast him versus Maru and I see casual fans going, wow, this Solar guy is not that good. Maru's destroying him. And then Solar survives, he hits Hive and he just wins against the best mm -hmm. Terran in the world. That's a regular scenario. So y there is a real pressure on Gumiho here to get something done. Man, he's been... Uh... Sneaking away with those Medivacs a couple times already, almost getting a bit lucky there, keeping those units alive. Oh, it could have been very possible right now that two full Medivacs would have gone down. Okay, there's one, about half a Medivac or so falling, but that is once more like eight or so supply going in favor of the Zerg. 2-2 two, two has started up, we've got ourselves at Hydralis Den, Hive will be starting up very soon, I assume, and we'll probably see a Lurker Den. That's the style that Solar's been loving. There's that Hive, and... Obviously, as soon as you get to Lurker Tech, you can march across the map and park them, for example, right next to the future planetary fortress, or even try to get them to that intersection, right? Like this section of the map right over here, where all of those Terran paths come together. It's very dangerous for Gumi. Gumiho is an expert in the mid game, the early game. He is known as someone who is often outclassed by a player like Solar in the late game, but I do think he's been working on that. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what gains he's made in that regard. He's got two command centers coming in for extra orbitals. He's floating his fourth out right now. Those Marines coming forward. And he's got tanks and Widow Mines layered behind it. I think the extra Widow Mines mixed in is key. One of the big weaknesses I saw in Cure's Terran vs. Zerg uh, earlier in this tournament was a lack of Widow Mines or Hellbats mixed into the just pure bio tank. And I really feel like adding these reacted units out, they have that explosive payload. And Ling Bane, 
Widow Mines are so stressful to deal with for a Ling Bane player like Solar. You're absolutely right. Luckily for him, though, he does have the Hydras, right? And they are pretty good at outranging those Widow Mines, but it is going to put Solar at least in a bit more of a defensive position. He's not going to be able to, yeah, just march across the map here and maybe overwhelm a Siege Tank base player. I think Solar will be pretty happy to be able to sit back. He did make the Lurker then, right? He yeah, finished Lurker up the Hive? Finished. Okay, yeah. He should start up those upgrades for the Lurkers in just a moment. Maybe make a Viper or two? I love where this is going for Solar. Gumiho starts another two command centers. So he's already got two extra orbitals. He's going to go to five. He wants to go up to seven behind that. The Iron Bank is on the way. And Solar wants to get a move on. He says, I'm maxed out. I've gotten that tech up. Those Medivacs getting left behind. A little awkward on the micro for a moment there for Gumiho. He does lose a lot of medivacs, but his marine micro is exceptional. He's on 93 workers. Gumiho is rich. Solar wants to punish him for this greed. Absolutely, yeah. Solar not even really transitioning just yet. Just happy to play that Hydroling Bane style. Okay, Gumiho getting a bit more aggression on the board once again. There's apparently a helmet oh! in the mix. In the meantime, though, the Banelings do collect at the front. This is a fight off creep. Generally not what Zerg players do, but yeah, if the Terrans don't expect it, you can still certainly catch them off guard. You know, it was funny, we saw before the game, Solo was practicing a build order. Gumiho, on the other hand, was practicing Marine Split Challenge. Yeah, the Marine Splits don't help you if you're looking elsewhere. And that's exactly what happened with that Baneling turnaround. He thought he was chasing Solo. Solo turned around, jumped on him. It was a lovely ambush, and he just really swung the momentum in his favor. Now, there's also Lurkers on the horizon, by the way. Seismic Spines, that's the ranged upgrade for the Lurkers into the horizon. But this game is looking like he doesn't even really need it. That is a tech advantage, though. That is absolutely massive. This is long before Gumiho is transitioning towards, well, that Ghost Liberator army that's been very popular as of late, right? He finally starts up the Ghost Academy. One thing, though, that I do really like here for Gumi is all of those command centers. You already brought them up. If he can s stabilize here, right, then he can get those command centers to start dropping mules and maybe get some scans going and get value out of them. This game can certainly still flip, but this is... <laughs> well, survival mode right now. That's all the Lurkers needs on the front door. Alive. It's a scary moment right now. The Banelings and the Lurkers on the front door. Solar is out for blood. Solar has a, a big advantage right now in terms of current army, but he doesn't actually have a lot of money behind it. He's got to find damage, and he's looking like he will. The Link Whoa. Bane! Big Widow Mine hits clear the front line, but that buyer is overstimmed, and there are 10 ranged Lurkers with Vipers with Blinding Cloud covering them. It's so hard to deal with this. Gumiar has to bide his time. He's going to have to flank in from multiple angles. Oh, and there's blinding cloud. That. I mean, he's going to have to from, come from the gold as well. I think if he wants to get on yeah. this, he's going to come from like three sides, but easier said than done. Concave is not enough, man. We need a circle. We need, we need a new geometrical shape in SC2 in order to pull this one off. Liberators are coming, though. Ghosts also on the production tab. Plus three, plus three is finishing up right now for the Terran. This is still possible. It's on a razor's edge, though. Lurkers are moving forward. I feel like this is not the entirety of the Zerg army. Oh, the Ling Bane Hydra rolling in. The Banelings hitting the Marauders. There's just too much firepower. There's not a lot of Marines to deal with the Zerglings anymore. The Lurkers have been untouched throughout. Solar gets control, does not take any damage from Gumiho's early game, and he is forced to GG. Wow. Brilliantly played right there by the Zerg. Shut down that early game aggression relatively easily. And honestly, did he make any mistakes? That was a really well played game right there by our Zerg. Just textbook approach, shut down the early game pressure. Managed to get ahead economically, build up his economy, and, well, get the tech advantage. Yeah, it was a bit more of a restrained opening from Gumiho. I think he was going for maybe a little bit of a mind game. He was expecting to get a bit more of a response. And, you know, I thought he did pretty well, but he overstayed his welcome here. He previously yep. panic stimmed once or twice. So those Marines were deep in the red. And we were pointing out that because he'd been busy defending a Zergling run by, he had a lot of army at home. And when you're stuck on the front without reinforcing for two or three minutes, guess what? Their army's getting bigger. Yours is not, and that does end up costing you. You can see here a lot of medevacs getting sniped as well. So a few kind of positional engagement errors. It's hard to even call them errors. It's like, because they're so yeah. slight, but that's all you need to do. You give Solar an opportunity, he's going to take advantage. Yeah, it's a few percentage points here and there, right? And ultimately that leads towards a very large result. Also because I believe that Solar is quite a bit more comfortable in the late game than Gumiho is. So. Yeah, Gumiho may be a little overly aggressive to try and just get this game over with maybe a bit quicker. Yeah. But ultimately, that backfires, right? And when the Lurkers are in that position, like, you just cannot break that anymore. You know, it's uh, it's kind of funny because we, we've kind of said sometimes that Solar's not, like, an endgame expert. 
But the moment he gets the Hive Tech 90 drones, it is really like he just takes control. It doesn't matter how much he's been in his corner defending. <laughs> he sees this matchup as defend for 10 minutes and then just get across the map and counterattack. I was just giggling at the lobby chat here for a moment. Solar's like, oh man, I can't win. Solar, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh -oh. Bit of a mind game right there as well, right? I love the lobby chat mind games. Those are really funny. Lobby chat me. banter is fantastic. Yeah. If you're ever running your own tournament, you are delay starting the game. You look back and there are 14 pages of emotes and countdowns and saying, go, go, one go. A, two A, three one A, two A, three A, go, 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 go. The players are eager, as always, to get at each other's throats. Down here in the bottom left side, representing Cloud9. He's got to make the comeback. In the red, it is Gumiho. Up here in the top right-hand corner of Solaris, representing Fatality, it's Solar. <laughs> New teams stepping into StarCraft 2. You love to see it, Pig. It's great. Love to see that that partnership between Fatality and Onside. And, and you know, Solar, as a player, we, we have expected to kind of dominate this group. Of course, uh, an unfortunate loss to Hero Marine for both of these players. He's been the big surprise of this group so far. But uh, it's a very important match. Now, Solar historically does have a win advantage uh, percentage over Gumiho. But last year during Gumiho's hot streak, he did defeat Solar, I think, three or four times in a row in big tournaments. And that was part of his whole turnaround of, of the tale of Gumiho, where a, a few players had such high win percentages against him for the year before that. Solar being one of them, eliminating him in multiple GSLs, Maru being another. Gumiho showed he had the ability to overcome these guys that previously it just looked like there was no way he was ever going to get that, that monkey off his shoulder. And he did it a few times in a row. What I'd like to see, though, is more aggression and more movement in this game. Yes, it's chaotic. Yes, Gumiho is not the cleanest multitasking player, but he's so creative with it, he will force massive mistakes out of his opponents. You're absolutely right. Solar, likewise, of course, also a player who's been competing for a long time, but who generally not win tournaments, right? He's one of those players who would consistently be within like the top 10, maybe top 15 of players. He would consistently make it to the top eight of premier tournaments, but then he would sort of fizzle out. Now he has yeah. overcome that. Of course, he ended up winning the GSL Code S, the most recent one, uh, just a, uh, well, I was gonna say a couple months ago, but time goes by pretty quick. <laughs> it's been a little while already, but. Solar is certainly one of the scariest Zergs out there. And well, you can see what happens, right? When you give him a small advantage, like we saw in game number one, he just runs away with the victory. It's very few players can make comebacks for Solar. Um, yeah. Maru occasionally, Clem occasionally, uh, not many others in this matchup. He, he's just so powerful at that stage of the game. Good micro for Gumiho so far. Solar also playing very safe with six oh. Zerglings. Oh, he's looking for the trap. He's gonna yeah. get it. He might get it. Yeah, I think he's got it. Queens, the Queens in the main base. Yeah, this is really nicely done by Solar. But wait, Gumiho! Oh, oh he get traps it. it. Council link speed, go Roach Ward. Ah, oh, we're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a fan of that move. Whenever oh. Terrans lose that Scouting Reaper, I feel like I have to punish him for it. But fair oh. enough, not gonna happen at this level of SC. No, I'm just thinking about all the, the most ridiculous thing you do. Just like, nah, just build the slow Zerglings and pull the drones. Drone drill the depot <laughs> wall down, let's go. Yeah, probably here for Gumi how it is. Right now he's playing in the dark. He hasn't even seen the third hatchery of the Zerg. And obviously that can be a little bit dangerous. Then again though, he's going up against Solar. When you think of a stock standard Zerg, I think Solar should come to mind. Yeah, I mean, if we, we, when we talk about Solar's weakness, it's that he's so rarely... He's so normal. He, he doesn't even do <laughs> run-bys a lot of the time. Like, when he's playing Maru, it's like one in seven games, he'll do like a six Zergling run-by. He's just defending and defending. And you think, oh, that's a bit one-dimensional, but he's so good at it. And he's so good at just hanging on until that late game. And when he gets to Hive Tech, boy, does he just swarm, swarm, swarm. Uh, not prone to really playing Broodlords. He's not prone to playing a very slow end game, but that's because he's, he's meant to crush you in the, the kind of mass baneling lurker stage. So if Solar can get there once again, he will be more than happy to play against Gumiho with that style. That being said, though, Gumiho mixing it up a little bit. He's been taking this little barracks here for a trip, scouting around for any overlords that may be hiding on the pillars, but Solar has already moved his overlords into a different spot. So yeah. That actually does kind of suck, though, because right now we are missing an add-on. There's only one Metavec coming up, and this does slow down Gumiho. He's very much so a tempo-based player, and already, even though nothing's really happened, that tempo is not looking all too hot here for the Terran. That's just such good match preparation by Solar. Studying Gumiho, knowing he's the kind of guy to hunt down overlords and try to, you know, snipe them, deny vision. Solar's prepared for it ahead of time, 
and that gives him a big uh, advantage uh, as he's not going to uh -huh. be able to take damage. He's this in is position. unscouted, though. He's got Lings nearby, just under that Overlord to the south. He should be able to move up quickly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, beautiful. He send him in. I thought for a second he only had two Lings available, but more of them came running from that natural expansion. And notice how it spreads move. them, so yeah. they, they don't get clumped up at all. He loses one Zergling. Like, what a, a perfect defense. Oh, hold that thought. This is that movement I was asking for, Loco. Gumiro coming in with three Hellions in the south, as well as the Hellion drop in the main. He gets six drones, make it seven. Good. And he gets out. Yeah, at least... Uh... Well, two of them are going to be able to get out. Hitting that with three Hellions is perfect because that's a, uh, enough to one-shot those workers there from Solar. Yeah, that's what you were talking about, right? A yeah. little bit of counter pressure. Like, it's not quite the norm to go for seven Hellions, right? We have more coming off. Okay, that's the reason. Double Armory on the back of this together with two additional factories. This is Gumiho playing Terran Mech. And I brought it up in the previous game already, but Gumiho played Mech before it was cool. This man was going for all kinds of strategies that nobody else was executing. You can't let him scout this though. You can't no. let him scout this. Oh, Lone Link's getting in towards that vein. They do see the factory still in the reactor. They see the double armory and Solar knows he cancels his double Evo chamber, or, or at least is not using them. I think he got to cancel one of them in time. Goes for the Roachron in the lair of the Overlord speed. And this is this is the problem. Every time he goes greedy mech, Solar kills him with a Roach Queen push. We see that upgrade. That's the German taxi upgrade right yep. there, Loco. You know he's going to wall in. He's going to be bringing that Overlord speed across the map. Cyclones are coming up, right? So this is very different than that style that we saw Maru play. Even though the unit composition is similar, it doesn't quite work out the same way here because the economy for the Terran is much lower. So how many drones do you make here as the Zerg pig? Do you just... No, you just make nothing but roaches from yeah. there. He's, he's all in. You can see Control Group 1 is already 10 roaches, and he's just going to keep adding roaches to that. He's going to make roach speed. He's just going to shove across the map queens to deal with the Banshees. And, and we saw what did Solar do after he got scouted. He started the fourth command center, which is a disaster. Obviously, he needs to build tanks right now. And after that, more siege tanks and Hellbats and, and Cyclones and do nothing but defend and survive. Maybe even get a bunker or two. The problem is Gumiho, I don't know if he realizes what's happening. And you can see here, Sol is just like, okay, so defend the Banshees, no worries. And he's just preparing for that giant shove. Yeah, it's so hard right here for the Terran to scout this sort of thing out, right? Because there's a lot of distance between all of these uh, these Zerg structures. So he might not be able to pick up on this. Hell oh, getting a good bit of damage done. Banshees also killing a considerable amount of drones. Now he's going to have to spoil the surprise. Those roaches do show themselves. He's got the two Dropper Lords there as well. Yeah, two Dropper Lords. You can see the Queens hopping inside. There's going to be six or seven Queens inside the Overlords. We're going back to the global camera oh, only view 49, there. Only 49 drones remain and soon to be even less. These Banshees though are needed at home. I think we need to go home ASAP. I, I don't know if the Banshees actually help at home. I actually think, you know, if they can sit on the rally point, maybe that would be the most useful because there yeah. are so many Queens and an Overseer with the push. He's doing a lot to weaken the Reinforce with this, but he's got to defend. Not at his third, but on the high oh. ground. He needs to give up this third base and get out of there. Gumio trying queens. to defend the third is crazy. He's got to pull workers in the front. He's got a lot of Ravages and Roaches. The SCVs need to pull out to defend this. Gumio is not respecting this push. Oh, Zerkling's coming around the side now and getting the full rep around Queens in the meantime. Drop on the high ground, an anti-armor missile or not. Solar just swarmed over that army. Siege tanks in the main base clumped together. That's a corrosive bomb target. Oh! He's going to get rid of one of the overlords. The, the queens are going to struggle there. The Biles on the high ground. Very nice. Those tanks starting to fall. He, the SCV is trying to fight the Ravages, but there's just no damage left. There's one tank, a cloaked Banshee, and another tank does pop out. But there's so few units right now for Gumiho. He's up in supply, ah. though. He killed so many workers. Yeah. He's completely all in. During that that first person view of Solar, we saw him lose a ton of drones. And if you look at the worker count right now, only 43 of them remain. If Gumiho can stabilize here with even just like slightly less workers than Berserk, it's still gonna be an advantage because of the way that this, well, unit composition and the economy here for the Terrans work out. He's got another command center. Yeah, he's got four command centers, yeah. remember? And, and look, he tries to be annoying by dropping creep. Gumio's like, what? I built a Raven. <laughs> I'm yep. so prepared for this. Gumio with a clutch hold there. And we saw earlier today, Solar against Hero Marine does not like to play against Mech. We know this because over the last few years, like I said, he doesn't like playing against Mech. Well, he does because he kills you at seven minutes normally. Yeah. If you survive past there, Solar is going to struggle to get back in this game. He's on three base against four. He's got no upgrades. Oh. He is way behind. Those Benchies killed the Roach Warren. <laughs> have a second Roach Warren coming up right now. I suggested that those Benchies should go back home, but you know what? Scratch that. Apparently, killing the Roachhorn is an even better target. Excellent moves right here, though, by Gumiho. So, 
Those Hellions over at the third base really distracted Solar, right? The Queens, they can only be in one location, well, at least individually at a time. You need to create multiple control groups, and Solar just lost, I don't know, I want to say 20 workers throughout this game, and maybe even more, and that puts him in a really tricky position now, because if he would have been, well, right now, say, for example, at 80 drones, right? Because he's been rebuilding them for a bit. This game would look very different than where we are currently at. But now Solar is forced to play catch-up against a battle mech player with the tempo advantage? Yeah, when you start 2-2 two, two and the Zergs just started plus one range, yeah. you know you're in a good spot as the mech player. You, the fact that you've got all the utility tools as well, like the supply does not explain how ridiculously good Gumiho's position is. You have a Raven, you have Banshees for air control, you've got 2-2 two, two upgrades, Blue Flame's on the way, Hurricane Thrust is almost finished, you're going up to eight factories, you have four bases full of workers with a fifth on the way. He has everything he needs for a late game, and he has an intensely scary push right now. Absolutely. Ahead in all the pillars of a game of StarCraft 2. Gumiho doesn't need to go and win the game, but you know what? You may as well go ahead and try Zerkling counterattack in the meantime over at the third base of the Terran. But GG is called. Gumiho evens up the score in this best of three series. The, I've never seen the headphones come off that fast with Solar there. Just slapped him off immediately. Yep. Obviously not happy with how that one had gone. It's, uh, you know, a good tricky build for Gumiho, but mm -hmm. it all started with the Hellion drop in the main, distracting the three Hellions, diving into the third base, finding some good value. Yeah. And of course, the Banshees. They did it again with the Banshees, right? Like there yeah. were another, I don't know if it was the same Hellions, but there were more Hellions being annoying over at the third base once again. So well done. And those Banshees, like, you know, we're like, oh, they're killing a few workers. Does it really matter? Well, yeah, when they kill like 20 workers, plus a Roach Roar, it definitely stacks off. Really nice opening for Gumiho with that movement. And I did think trying to defend the third was unnecessarily greedy here for Gumiho. I do think he should have kept all of his tanks a bit further back. Yes. Um, to me, it feels like he didn't fully realize just how committed Solar was. And it made things a little scarier than it needed to be. Yeah. But a uh, great hold in terms of the SCVs defending the, the Ravages you're going to see in a moment. Those tanks do go down, but they did so much damage before they fell. Yeah, a couple of the balls did not quite connect there, and that ultimately makes this counterattack here from Gumiho that hit a couple minutes later. Well, pretty much impossible to stop. So in this group, these players are currently in a shared second place. Hero Marine already out in first place out of this group so far. I mean, it's not over yet, of course, but... Solar and Gumiho really want to obtain the victory in this match because that's going to make tomorrow so much less stressful. Yeah, it's such an important one. Um, I, I did think this would be the match for first place in this group. Yeah, you know, I think everybody it. did. <laughs> <laughs> Big Gabe ruined everyone's uh, expectations and maybe inspired Gumiho here. The, the thing is, I, I usually playing mech again twice in a row is a bad mistake. He's got to think hard about his next choice. While we wait for Solar to come back, we will be going to a quick break. We'll be back with game three in a moment. Hello, this is Solar from Vitality. I'm here with Sina and Gumiho, and we are doing some funny poses right now. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, 저는 항상 기억에 많이 남았던 게 GSL 했던 순간들이 기억이 되게 남았는데 아무래도 작년에 좀 우승을 하다 보니까 좀 좋은 기억이었던 것 같아서 작년이 제일 기억에 많이 남네요. 아 저는 이거 잘 못해서 무스님이 더 잘하지 않을까. 저는 사실 그렇게 제 종족을 좋아하진 않는데 그래도 저그가 아무래도 좀 약간 그 남들 다른 종족들보다 좀 약간 손도 빠르고 손도 빨라야 되고 좀 뭔가 약간 빨리빨리 하는 게 있어서 제가 약간 성격이 좀 급해가지고 그렇게 빨리 하는 걸 좋아하는 것 같아요. 어 이거 어떻게 해? 아직 하나도 모르겠네. 네. 저는 원래 약간 컨트롤을 하는 걸 좋아했었어가지고 어렸을 때는. 그런 게 있어서 선택을 했는데 제가 초창기에는 랜덤으로 시작을 했었거든요. 그래서 하다가 이제 테란이 컨트롤하는 맛도 있고 그리고 메카닉이라는 걸 그때 제가 만들어 놨었는데 제가 다른 종족을 하면 이 메카닉을 그냥 버려야 되는 그게 너무 아까워 가지고 테란을 좀 하게 됐어요. 그 당시. 저는 아무래도 다른 종족을 하게 된다면 아마 거의 100%로 프로토스를 하지 않을까? 왜냐면 프로토스가 굉장히 플레이 난이도가 쉽고 제가 평소에도 자주 하기 때문에 아마 프로토스 할것 같아요. 어, 왜 이렇게 어렵지? 아, 그냥 저 아예 그렇게... 모르겠네, 그냥. 와, 정신 나갈 것 같다. 아니, 와, 진짜. 저, 와, 이거 몇개안돼 보이는데 왜 이렇게 어렵냐? 저, 하나도 못 하겠어요. 정신 나가겠네. 아니, 왜안 보이냐? 아니, 얘가 이 눈이 이상한 건가? 이거 하나도 안 보이지? 선생님, 이거 컨닝이 좀. <웃음> 야, 이 
끝이에요? 와. 이거 어떻게 해? 이거 한 사람 있어요? 이거밖에 못했어 완성한 사람 있어요? 와 어려워 <웃음> 저, 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 저 이제 여기까지 했어 가위가 막힌 것들이 있잖아요 그걸 위주로 먼저 찾고 그거부터 맞춰서 이렇게 갈라 그랬는데 그러니까 제가 이 그림을 인식하는 게좀 둔해가지고 사실 이 그림 으로 찾는 걸잘 못했어요. 그냥 이 가에서부터 어떻게 좀 하려고 그랬는데 아, 생각보다 그림이 눈에 안 들어오더라고요. 그래서 최선을 다했지만 여덟 개 이게 한 개입니다. <웃음> 저는 퍼즐을 너무 어릴 때 해보고 처음 해봐가지고 진짜 약간 너무 <웃음> 약간 오랜만에 동심으로 돌아간 것 같고 그래도 재밌네 오랜만에 이렇게 한 번씩 하니까. 오. <웃음> Very impressive gameplay right there. You know what, Pig? I always love it whenever we first hear, yeah, Protals is the easy one, and then we see the pro gamer struggling solving a <laughs> puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. I, it's so funny, yeah, because like uh, that we've seen multiple videos of those puzzles now, and yeah. they all seem to struggle very, very hard. But I guess they're answering questions at the same time. We've got to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's been a while since they were back in preschool doing the old puzzles. Fair. Instead, they have their brain at 99.9% .9 CPU usage all the time trying to solve a little game called StarCraft. Here we go. Our next match, it takes place on the map Oceanborn. Final map in this best of three series. Spawning right here in the bottom right hand corner. Make some noise for Gumiho. Woo! Battle cruises, battle cruises, battle cruises. I'm here for it, man. <laughs> and in the top left side of the map, looking to stabilize, and he's going to be scouting harder than ever after that last game. Representing Vitality, it's Sola. I do like the strategic decision, though, by Solar in that previous game. I think it would have worked out really well had he not lost 20-odd eh, workers. <laughs> that throws a bit of a wrench in the plan, right? Yeah, that's Strategically, kind of funny. it was really clever. That's like that, that thing. We've all had that happen where you're so dead set on hitting a timing attack, and then it's like this harass surprises you, right? When you're trying to gather your queens to go load up, and you're like, yeah. oh, and you kind of go back, but then you're like, oh, it's not that big a deal. I'll just continue going, and then... They're bouncing between your bases, picking everything off, and you're like, man, if I just had an Overseer morphed and saw the Banshees coming in, but they clearly surprised him. Like, if yeah. he saw where they were coming from, he could have moved the Queens, got an Overseer there in time, and he'd probably just shut it down. Yeah, and I also think that that Bunker Fly that we saw at the... St or sorry, not the Bunker Fly, the Barracks Fly to try and shut down Overlords. Yeah. They were preventing any of the Overlords from being at the perfect location to see those Banshees coming in, so the angle may have just caught Solar off guard just a little bit. He should have certainly had some sort of vision a little bit closer to home, but anyways, all of that is in the past. It all comes down to this particular match right here now. Oceanborn, do you expect any crazy builds here? I honestly have no idea. I think it comes down to how Gumiho plays. I expect Solar to scout, react, and defend. Mm -hmm. He's going to do what he does best. He's gone for a 15 hatch, 15 pool again, getting out his uh, two queens very early and no doubt extra queens behind that. One of the advantages of this with those earlier queens is you can get your creep spread going super fast. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Solar both start a creep tumor on the natural as quickly as possible and go for a fast third base. Uh, his link speed will be a bit delayed from normal though. So if Gumiho had gone for like say a gas first or a normal barracks gas, he could do a Hellion run by, but with a command center first, that factory is a bit later. There's no real opportunity to take advantage of the delayed link speed. Absolutely. Yeah, that gas taken a little bit slower. Solar, not entirely sure yet what he's playing against, but he will find out in just a moment. He's thinking about sneaking those Zerklings around. Yeah, that Reaper is gonna be sticking at home for now, right? Gumiho not really using this for scouting. He did not send an SCV across the map either. So at this point, he's giving Solar the benefit of the doubt. And you know what? If you're gonna give any Zerk player the benefit of the doubt in the early game, I think Solar might just be the one. I'm assuming it's once again gonna be Hellion play. Now, Solar is really good against stock standard Terran aggression. In the previous game, we did not have stock standard Terran aggression. We had a bunch of Hellions in the main and a Medivac, and then a few as well, three of them in total, for a counterattack over at the third. And that's where that House of Cards started falling down for Solar, right? Mm -hmm. He took a lot of damage from that odd bit of early game pressure, even though it's something that is not rocket science to solve, it's just something that he hasn't played against nearly as often 
as the most normal and standard strategies that Terrans usually employ. Well, this looks a lot more similar to game one. The second barracks is just finishing a tech lab. We expect Stim to come in pretty early, and a mixture of Hellions, Marines, and Medivacs will be the start for Gumiho. Uh, he didn't go very hard into that aggression in game one. He kind of backed out of it. I think with the same setup, he can lean into the aggression a lot harder. He can multi-prong a bit more and he will be looking for more momentum. Solar, of course, looking to repeat game one, slap it down, get ahead, and steamroll him in the mid game. Marines come in here. They will be able to get the kill on that Overlord, which is really quite nice, because this is going to leave Solar in the dark for at least a moment. That Overlord is floating to the surface, as we do get a first-person view right here of what our Terran player is looking at. And Gumio actually yeah. playing at higher than low graphic settings. Yeah, still got that gamma crank to a thousand as the yeah. pro love to have. Guys, if you're playing StarCraft and it doesn't feel like your eyeballs are getting irradiated, you're not doing it the way the pros do. Yeah, lowest graphic settings preferably, but this is, I think it's medium maybe? I'm not exactly sure. It doesn't look like the absolute lowest ones. No, it looks pretty good. Uh, he's probably got things like physics turned off for higher performance, so yeah. obviously when we're in that observer camera, we get to see really cool chunks go flying everywhere and bodies floating up to the top of the ocean. We are on the ocean floor on this map and everything floats up when it gets blasted, uh, which is definitely how the real world works for sure. Absolutely. Uh, it's fun. It's fun at least. Uh, the Marine drop sneaking into the main base. First pressure here. Four Hellions and a Reaper in the south. It's going to just pick up. That's going to go to the low ground. High ground, low ground, plus the Hellions and the natural. Nice way of doing this for Gumio. Backs off with the Hellions and the Marines going into that mineral line. Yeah, the Zerklings, okay, they're going to be needed over here. They may just be waiting in the natural to try and surround any of those Hellions, but already not a bad start, albeit one with a supply block. Uh, did he just finish he, the He depot? just came out of it. Yeah, he oh, okay, got okay. two depots, but he had one already finishing. So it was it was like actually perfect play. It yes. was an almost supply block, which is pretty much optimal. Third command center started double engineering bay as well. He's going to try and uh, group up his units for a moment. I wouldn't mind maybe a Hellion drop rotating into the main. Fighting the Queens. Oh, he's actually draining a few transfusers, which is pretty good to soften those Queens up for the future. Mm -hmm. Third command center is going to finish up in the main base. This is certainly not that super quick a triple CC play right here from Gumi. So dealing a bit of economical damage was almost a necessity. And yeah, I don't think Solar is hating this early game all too much, right? He's just trying not to yet, get not a yet, not yet, movement right there. No, Queen's not on attack command. And they're going to be wandering forward. What's that? A bunker? Okay. That that this is what we call the troll bunker, Loco. So the idea behind the troll bunker is when Solar goes to take that fourth, you go, haha, I have a bunker here. And Solar's brain breaks a little bit because he goes, oh, why would you build that there? That's so confusing. This is literally the weirdest thing I've seen in a while. This level of match, this late in the game, that is a confusing maneuver. I love it. Oh, it's actually going to get scouted. <laughs> yeah, look at this. This is where he takes a literal double take, right? Like yeah. that is... A Zork look at Solar. An Academy he looks Award. stressed on his camera. He's like, I don't know why you're doing that. And it's confusing me. Now you can obviously salvage the bunker too, get the majority of your resources back. As awkward as this play is, it's forcing Solar at the very least to now take the fourth base over on the left side, the suboptimal location. Gumio's very committed to the uh, the poking and the prodding here. His third command center has finished behind it, but he's, he's got to keep Solar on three base, and he's done that successfully for a little bit. Solar's fourth, of course, halfway down on the south of the map. 62 drones to 53 SCVs. Not many Marines here, but the double drop does rejoin with that army, and suddenly you've got a nice force of Stim Shields Marines. Combat Shields and Stim is good, but 1-1 one, one is still 40 seconds out. Absolutely, that's not going to finish up just yet. Neither is Baneling speed, though, in this game, right? Okay. Oh. Big Zorkling counterattack. Depot certainly will be lifted. Third command center, uh, third command center though, rather, did just land on the low ground. Oh, no, actually, no, no, no. Yeah, they, yes. they don't have a landing permit, oh Loco. God. It's an unstable ground. They've done the survey and... Uh, Sir, it's blocked. <laughs> there's one <laughs> tiny Zergling underneath this, uh, you know, 10... Plus the command center has little legs as well, right? How does it <laughs> yeah. work? It's a 10 million ton structure of metal, but no, it can't land there. It's got to be, be flat, man. Gotta make Especially sure not if it's burrowed. That makes even more sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can't have any biomass in underneath there. Uh, honestly, the supply is not bad. The, the workout's good for Gumio. But Solar's building eight more workers. Solar's going hydrogen. Mm. His Baneling Speed started. I, I feel like Baneling Speed's late enough. If Gumio can Jimmy, force no. a fight, that'd be great. But yeah, a few Marines stumble in. He's, he's got to put a bit more pressure on now, because a minute from now, he's going to have to back away when Baneling Speed is done. Now, the Siege Tanks are in a really lovely spot, but indeed, this is not really provoking the Zerg that much, right? Gumi's yeah. like, hey, hey, man, come, come, come and fight me right now, please, because I want a bit of a timer as soon as you finish up Baneling Speed. This is going to be really tricky for me to hold. 
Okay, Solar not taking the bait for now. He knows that the siege tanks are in a position behind those minerals. Very little surface area. Okay, he's trying to deny the pathing here of the Metavex. Quite a few transfusers though are being soaked. Yeah, I mean, those transfusers are gone. He's out of juice right now. Those queens have done a great job soaking damage, buying time, but they are, of course, now out of energy. They can't do that any longer, or the queens will start falling. He's getting his splash, uh, you know, his, his Ling Bane counter attack, or flanking force, I should say, on the right side. It's ready to cut off reinforcements, but he's seeing no units reinforcing. Solar's gonna bring that north, and he's gonna swing that in behind the tanks, I believe. Oh, no, he's actually not. Well, he certainly can if he needs to. He's got a lot of army. Okay, here he comes. And this is going to be quite expensive here for Gumiho to lose. I still... <laughs> oh. So much cost efficiency in these units, right? Look Tanks on the banelings could get a few good shots. Doesn't quite get the big hits. Oh. I was thinking. Uh, one or two big ones do go down, but so much damaged banelings. Not that many actually dying. Shoving on creep on the left. Gumiho is just going balls to the wall. This is a crazy move. The mad lad Gumiho is going for broke right now. He is deep on creep. This is so dangerous. There's a lot of bailing still left over though from that previous fight. Is there enough here for the Zerk? One of the siege tanks already gets surrounded. Second siege tank is not going to be too far behind. Darren's going to have to retreat all the way off creep. And that looked like a bit of an overextension to me, but the supply count is still looking solid here for Gumi. Supply's good for Gumi, but he has no artillery, no siege tanks, or widow mines. It's pure marine medevac. You put Beyond in these shoes, and I'd say just drop everywhere at once and micro. But this is Gumi, a player who doesn't have just the same micro, speed and, and micro. It's, <laughs> that's it. I mean, you can't attack head on on creep against those no. things. He has to split up and attack four places at once. You're playing one of the best defensive multitaskers in the world in solar. That's so scary. Who two is finished up right now for the Terran, though, so does Marine get a nice little power spike for at least a little while because solar's upgrades are on the horizon here too this oh. is an uphill battle here for gumiho as a lot of those marines are low in hit points there was no more room inside of the meta vex so some of those marines will not be able to evacuate in the meantime over at the third base the queens are in a whole lot of trouble Metavex are being targeted down, but oh. ultimately that means that the Zerklings and the Banelings are going to be able to clean all of this up. Yeah, that's super worth it there for, for Solar. Trade a few Queens, you've got Hydras out, you don't need as many Queens anymore. Gumiho though, with a bit of momentum on the south side, will get three drones and a hatchery there, oh. and he's at least keeping him pinned on four bases. And meanwhile, of course, Gumiho's fourth command center is almost finished. He's keeping Solar small enough. Remember, with limited creep spread, if you don't take a fifth base, your main's half mined out, your natural's about to half mine out. Solar will not be able to use the worker advantage as these bases keep getting denied. Yeah, and it's also not that amazing of a Zerg economy, right? 73 drones is respectable, but I would consider it the bare minimum when playing a Ling Bane based unit composition. Fourth command center at this point is done for Gumi. That means, well, it's almost finished anyways. That means that he's adding on his final barracks. That is barracks six, seven, and eight that will probably all get little tech labs on them in just a moment if this game goes on for a little while longer. Gumi Hodo just put his foot on the gas. He wants to end this game ASAP. He's dropping the northern base again while picking up to drop the back of the natural at the same time. And he's got marine tank on the front. He's being a nuisance to play against right now. Hydra's not able to shut that oh. down. Oh, yes, they are. They get just in range here, though, in the middle. Marines get a focus down the fourth base. Baylings get on top, but he picks up at the last second. The Marines and the tanks will get pushed back now. The tanks falling, which are, of course, oh. very costly. The Marines are in the back of the natural as well. You can see that in the picture in picture. Drones start to fall. Gumio leading into the chaos, but he's taking heavy losses. This is not a cheap maneuver. No, this is not cheap by any means. Those Metafex are also not going to go home. Base oh. connect with the Marines. Here's another drop. Maybe this base will go down. There's a little bit of transfusion energy available on the Queens. In the meantime, a Zerkling Baning counterattack, and now suddenly that supply advantage is significant for Solar. He's forced to rebuild a bunch of his bases. Fair enough, but I think this is still excellent here for our Zerk player. That's why we call in the sponge. Gumio literally just threw everything he could at him, and he just absorbs it. He takes every punch, and yeah. then he just gets up, counterattacks. He says, I've got my hive done, I've held on, and you had to expense all of your resources, so many Marines and Medivacs, to get the damage that you found. It'd be crippling if you had a fourth base up and a full economy behind it, but oh. you don't. I have smashed your work account down. You've got only a few Marines left over. Gumio's on the ropes. This is not even uh, Solar's final form. There's Ultras coming, Adrenal Glands, 3-3 three, three upgrades. I believe I saw Vipers on the production tab too. Look at this man. That's the Already half asleep. <laughs> he, he literally, you can see it on his camera, his head just tilted to the side. I think that, he wins the game, but he's actually frustrated with himself saying, oh, I should, it should have been cleaner, it should have been easier. Demanding yep. perfection from himself. That's what you take to become a top tier player. It's, uh, it's basically never being satisfied, always looking for the, uh, the next uh, plateau, the next level that you can get to.
Absolutely, probably not all too happy with how he defended against all of that multi-prompt aggression there from the Terran, right? Ultimately, he came out ahead, but I think in his mind, it could have been a lot cleaner. Either way